Welcome back to another video about lessons learned from developing my game Pixel Art Academy which I've been working on for nine years now. Last time in part one I talked about production but today we go into marketing. I know a lot of developers out there kind of hate the topic of marketing at least the people I live with not many actually enjoy it so I just wanted to share my views on it. It can also not be a horrible thing at least not the way I see it. I like to think of it as serving a community, letting marketing happen as a side effect of being on the internet. I love being on the internet. I think internet is one of the greatest gifts <laughs> given to us. I see it as a way to connect to people that have the same interests as me. And the first place where I really found my people I felt was on Tumblr. Here is where I could share my love for indie games and pixel art. And all of this happened way before I was trying to market my game. I started my blog in 2010, so that was five years until Pixel Art Academy came along. And yeah, you should start today because it is a long-term process doing it this way. Again, I'm not saying this is the smartest marketing way, but this is a way for doing marketing that works for me, that makes me feel good inside. And you better like it just for its own thing, because the growth, especially at the start, is very slow. It took me two years to get to 100 followers. That's two years of just talking to a bunch of people and getting to know them. And then, Every once in a while you're gonna have a break when somebody's gonna post you and you're gonna get featured by the platform. And so just by being part of this community for five years and keep improving the content I was posting, I got to 10,000 followers in five years by the time of the Kickstarter. Here is how my Tumblr looked in practice when I was doing my Kickstarter in August of 2015. You can see I was posting about daily up until that point and a very good mix of posting about other people's project and a little bit of self-promoting in there. So this is just kind of to give you the idea of how much work I was putting into this. So why I'm showing you this point in particular is that at this point I started tracking my numbers. From that point on, every first of the month I would write down how many followers I got. And here I still had pretty good growth because in 2017 I was able to go to GDC Game Developers Conference as press because I am writing about enough people at this point, I have enough followers so I was able to get press access and I would just do interview with everyone making anything in the pixel art style. So I had enough content to just write daily and you can see that in 2017 that kept my growth going. From 2019 onwards, it starts slowing down, especially in 2020, good old COVID hit. And I was just not spending that much time online. In 2019, I moved to Sweden to Spell Collective, which is an amazing co-living, co-working space where I get to live with other game developers, super interesting creative people. But on the flip side, that was actually quite bad for this marketing because I had all my social needs met from just being with people around me, especially during COVID where most people got stuck in their homes and spent way more time online. For me, it was actually the other way around because I still had these 50 people living in this bubble of a co-living space. Relative to others, I spent way less time online Line. and you can see this clearly as I did not put as much content and stopped hanging out online. Very similar story up on Twitter and it's also been very hard now getting back into it. It's very hard to pick up momentum. There's a big part of me that wishes I wouldn't have stopped but what happened happened now we can only look forward. And just to illustrate at least one account where I did start from zero during the time when I'm tracking things Here's my TikTok. Obviously, I have not even had a thousand followers yet. But again, this is how this looks like when you are just a little bit on the platform and then when you also start to put yourself out there. And the important part is I enjoy being on TikTok. I think it's a great platform. I love seeing how creative people are and I already love being on the platform and very happy to then also put some of my own content in there. 
most what I wanted to say is that yes it is a long-term process and I'm just giving you a lot of examples of how this can look like for different platforms sometimes these are a little bit bigger numbers I'm nowhere big in no essence of the word yet but most people aren't this is a little bit of a start of the story maybe this is even an average story of not hitting it big but still, by putting out content, you will reach other people who are interested in the same things that you are. And now that I've been talking about numbers for so long, I want to put them down. Because as much as I like going over all my social media accounts and putting them into spreadsheets, what I do care about is every individual people, even if just one person watches my Twitch stream right now, it's already been a connection. In the early days of Tumblr, for example, I met Pakalin, I loved her blog. I was really artistically drawn to it. And a little bit later, when I was working on the first mobile game that we published, Monkey Labor, was this kind of a game and watch. After I posted this, I had got reblogged and posted on a, another, a little bit bigger blog called It 8 Bit. And what do you know? Pakalin was actually one of the editors there. So just for being in this community and interacting with her and just liking her work, eventually our game ended up on this Tumblr. And then a year later, when I was putting out my first bigger pixel art illustration, it 8-bit also posted about it. But this time, do you know who else reads it 8-bit? Well, Kotaku also has a Tumblr and that's how this artwork ended up on Kotaku. And look who posted about my game, it's Luke Plunkett. And why is this matter? Because three years later, when I posted my Kickstarter for Pixel Art Academy, look who wrote about it on Kotaku. It was Luke again. So you can see how from just interacting with somebody on Tumblr, eventually, five years later, it would come to my Kickstarter being published there. And when I was looking at my top referrers of my campaign, you can see that Kotaku is in fact the largest external website. 9% of the Kickstarter backers came from that article. And that's how I like to see it. A very top tier influencer is just a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of somebody that you know. And that person that you do know really matters. Pakalin is a good friend of mine. And these are the things that really bring happiness to me from my time on the internet. But of course, when it comes to connecting with people on these kind of platforms, well, you also have to create something. And in this case, I think passion really matters because there are no guarantees that you will go big. A lot of my videos get up 200 views, but it's okay because I really enjoyed making each and single one of them. And even if one person watches it, that's already awesome. In more practical terms, this is one of the ways how I decide what kind of content I will create. I simply look around at what kind of content I enjoy from others. It's okay. You can copy. You're going to make your own content with it. Taking the format is completely okay. So I love watching devlogs, which is why I make devlogs myself. And it's important not to have double standards when it comes to this. This is also advice to myself. For example, I feel a little bit unease at posting about my game all the time. Why are you begging for this wish list all the time? That's what my inner critic or something in my head goes. However, no double standards. Here's, for example, a game that was very successful recently. Friedemann, who I got to meet at Castle Game Jam, I just love what he's doing with this little chunky low resolution camera in his game Summer House. He really kept on posting about it for his release. Here are his tweets about it one day from release and then two days from release and then three days from release and four days and five days and six days and did i feel like oh freeman you just keep posting about your game this is horrible no i actually enjoyed seeing each one of these as you can see i left likes on the ones that the algorithm actually showed it to me and 
not just one week before here's less than two weeks till the release here's two weeks release like he put out so many tweets about his game and never have i felt like oh i wish i would stop seeing this so i need to remember this for myself that hey if i keep talking about my game probably people won't hate me for it maybe they will actually enjoy it just as much as i enjoy others when others do it that's what i mean just do what you like and you'll be fine another example is this chain tweets i actually hate chain posts and the ones that i really can't stand is the one where you post something and then you tag people who you want to continue the thread the chain if i get mentioned in one of those ones i just freeze up and like no why does this happening to me however then i noticed that what i do like is when people started doing quote tweets of others. So instead of you nominating other people to continue the chain, you proactively, you get to choose to continue a chain that others have started. And I loved seeing other people doing it. And that's how I found the love of doing it myself. And it's pretty cool and I'm happy. So no double standards. You can do anything you enjoy others doing. One last thing, I see way too many people feeling like they are not ready it's not time yet they're not in the right place being perfectionistic about it you know the reality is there's so much content on social media as we scroll we look at something it's fine it's just five seconds of somebody's time it doesn't have to be perfect and even if somebody does notice something that you've done wrong you can make that to your advantage i actually love doing that these days like i talked about it last time when i created this cassette tape feature the things weren't rotating and so people were replying to it oh you should really make it rotate well now i have a chance to actually implement it and now i made people extra happy because i listened to them and i did what they would like to have and one more thing i do to help defeat this perfectionism right now my mentality is to leave at least one mistake in each thing that i make in fact i was just recording footage for the new trailer and what did i find out here in the top corner over here there's a little green dot indicating that the screen is being recorded i just recorded five videos before noticing this and instead of going and re-recording all of this stuff you know what i did i said this is my one mistake that's gonna be in there probably people won't care they're gonna enjoy the rest of the trailer life is gonna move on so yeah you don't have to be things doesn't have to be perfect you can have your whatever hoodie on and glasses and a palm tree in the background whatever it doesn't matter and look it's doing quite well for me getting a thousand people watch my stupid face i am very happy about that it's more important that you are out there you're your authentic self than how polished everything is of course there are certain instances where if you're making artistic videos on youtube that's a different story the video the content is pretty much an artwork in itself but for marketing reasons where you are just documenting your process talking about your things you don't have to be precious about it you just have to be out there and enjoy it and speaking of not being perfectionistic about things here's the editing Matei working on this video like a month later since I have recorded this talk on Twitch in the meantime what has happened a good thing Adam Eunice recorded a similar video called is content creation a realistic way to fund game dev so I just wanted to say my talk is all about doing it just on the side adam's video he's actually talking about doing all of this stuff content creation professionally so that that is a significant income source to be able to fund your games so if you're interested in also making money from doing this stuff definitely check out adam's video is full of great content just wanted to point that out because it's a great resource he made and now to the end of the video so thank you again for watching part two thank you so much i will be back next time with my findings about crowdfunding i've been doing this kickstarter for nine years and i've looked at a lot of projects and i have some key insights so subscribe if you haven't yet all right thank you very much i'll see you next time